You're listening to the GC Collaborative Podcast, a resource for the worship arts team at Grace Church. What's Hello? Up? Hello? You, that was a cool word, actually. We sh- I should have did what's I'm up. I'm saying what's up, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. What's you, up? The kids will love that. GC Collaborative Podcast, Podcast. listeners. Uh, it's good to uh, not see you. Um, mm. It's good to be in your ears. Yeah. And uh, welcome to this month's edition of the GC Collaborative Podcast. Mm. My name is Ben mm. Abusada, mm. the director of Worship Arts at Grace Church, mm. alongside our co-host, everyone who loves Luke you. Luke Lobber. Oh, I'm Every, sorry. Yeah, Luke Lobber. I'm Luke sorry. <laughs> I just got excited. You pointed at me. I said, it's mine. It's my turn. My, right turn. my time to shine. Oh, my it's my time to shine. Uh, uh, welcome to this edition of the podcast. It's good to oh, be back. It's, it's been a couple months great. without me. I hope uh, it seems like things went oh well, uh, went went okay, went we, oh well. We've had better ratings than we've ever had. Great. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, no, it is awesome to have you back, honestly. I've Thanks. missed you. I well, settle find down, settle that down. I stopped crying as much uh, after today. Yeah, so. I noticed last month the uh, intro was like, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds. If that, I <laughs> was just like, I'm just going to say words and hopefully it works uh, now. But this time, this month, we have uh, an yes, awesome podcast. Yes. We've got our Aletha crew joining us. Mm-hmm. Brian Gann, who's the Aletha campus pastor, yes. and Kurt White, who is the Olathe worship director. Um, And it was an awesome conversation about First Chronicles, and uh, we can't wait for you to hear it. So shall we... Do you want to just go right in? We can. Or do you want to save the other stuff for the end? Yeah, let's save that for the end. Enjoy. Have fun. All right, everybody. Uh, As we said in the intro, we have Brian and Kurt here from the Olathe campus with us today. Ah, We're so excited to have you guys. Thank you so much for being here and being on the podcast. How are you guys doing today? Doing all right? Not bad. Good. Yeah, Yeah, doing really well. Pretty good. Thank you for that. That that welcome that was that, that was wasn't rousing. us that was the crowd we just was, said your names and that was the response so. oh yeah I'm surprised that. they fit them all in here that's good yeah that's it's good. a tight room oh. <laughs> COVID's yeah. over I think I do have to say, say um, the biggest microphone I've ever seen is in front of Brian's face and I just posted a picture <laughs> on my Instagram yeah <laughs> I, I so if you want to go to my Instagram b a b u s a a d a uh, you can see this microphone. Yes. It's yeah, I told Ben, I said, I, 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 I'm supposed to have my face in front of this microphone, yeah. which means I can't see him. <laughs> yeah. So I, I know you're there. <laughs> I hear you. Hear you. you have the best seat in the house. I mean, honestly, I'm jealous of you. <laughs> well, either that or you didn't want to look at me. <laughs> 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 right, it's actually a big social experiment to yeah. see who picks what mic when they come in yeah, here. Yeah. We just don't yeah. tell anybody. Yeah. It's like let's see where this goes. And there's uh, one guy you single out and say, "Let's let's see what he, let's, see, mm-hmm. let's see if we can get in there." Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll good. tell you the results later. It's neither here nor there. Oh my goodness! Now we're awesome. excited to be here. Thank you for in, yeah, inviting for sure. us, guys. Yeah, absolutely. So today, as you guys know, we've been going through the podcast this year, and we've been taking different scriptures and parts of scripture that talk about worship, and kind of unpacking them, and then talking about maybe how that's affected our lives, and then how that also can and or does affect uh, worship as a community, and especially here at Grace Church. And so today, you guys have picked First Chronicles 16, correct? Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. awesome. Well, let's just get started. Let's have you guys read, uh, and we'll kind of dive in. Sweet. Well, we're going to start in verse 23. It says, seems to... Oh, well, I can, this is starting off great. I can really talk good. Wow. <laughs> this is great. Wow. <laughs> Left and right, top to bottom. (laughs) (laughs) He only reads chord charts. (laughs) Some chords above that. I need numbers. I wouldn't mind if he sang it. That'd be kind of nice. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. What version are you using? I don't even know. Oh, and I'll see. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, guys. (laughs) He hasn't done this for a while. I apologize. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I'll try it again. Verse 23. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared above all gods. For all gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. 
the world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Man, it's awesome. Taking it all in. Yeah. It's good. It's a lot. It's a lot, it's, but it's good though. Yeah. It's, yeah, it is good. So when we uh, when we invited you guys on, you guys got to kind of choose uh, a passage. What uh, what was it about this one that that made you want to read this one or kind of look at this? So we were I don't know we were talking. I mean, for all to be honest, it was yesterday. I think mm-hmm. we were talking about it, trying to figure out two yeah, days ago. Yeah, we we circled back and uh, got got back on it. But this one here, I've I remember reading this one in the past mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. the looking like. We were talking beforehand, just kind of going over it uh, back in here. So they're talking about before, just to kind of preface what's going on, like the Ark of the Covenant is put into the tabernacle, and there's there's getting things ready, and they begin just to worship. And through all the things that they had to do um, in the temple and everything back back then, and here we are, post when Jesus came, mm-hmm. we don't have to do, we don't have to prep all these things and, and get these, uh, get the the ark just in the right spot and everything ready. Like we just get to go before the Lord and just worship. And so what I love about this is just that what he's talking about doing, even though times have changed and uh, it's, it's easier to go and just stand before, before the Lord and just worship. We're doing the same thing they were, you know, we're still getting to just sing his praises and proclaim his name. Um, and so I love that what they were doing a couple thousand years ago, we're still doing today. And so, yeah, I think it's pretty cool too. And, you know, he starts off in verse 23 by giving an aspect of worship, which is singing to the Lord. And he says, sing to the Lord all the earth. And I mean, that's the declaration for everybody to do. And it's not, it's not just for those of us who follow Christ, but he wants the entire earth to proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day, right? Which is a, a piece of our worship. And I think when we worship him, it really is certainly singing, but secondly, proclaiming his salvation throughout mm. the day. That's worship as well. I mean, that's sweet in the in the the nostrils of of the Lord. That's sweet in His eyes. You know, it's like when we um, when we brag on other people. Mm. That's a, that's a a form of worshiping them. To say, oh man, let me tell you. Um, now we don't phrase it like that in our current culture and context. But when, 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 we, when we praise other people, we're sharing how good they are at something or what we love about them or appreciate about them. That's proclaiming the good news of his salvation day by day. And it's not given as an option either. It's given, he, he wants us to do it. It's, it's just declared. So that, that verse, it just really, really, it's rich. Um, so, yeah, and I love how he goes on in verse twenty-four. Um, how he goes on and he and he says, declaring his glory among the nations, his wonders among all his people. And I think that that whole idea of what is worship in our lives and what is worship at Grace, I think it 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 certainly is something that should be happening daily in our lives. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I've grown up in church, and I think sometimes my default has traditionally been worship happens on Sunday morning. Mm, Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys can relate to that or not. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I wonder, like, you make a good good point there, because I I always read, when I read these, sometimes like, well, what is it, what does it mean to declare to declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples like what does that tangibly mean to us as individuals when we when we read a scripture or a passage like that is it a lifestyle thing or is it hey do we need to continually just every moment of every waking hour of every day saying things like god is good god is good god is good god is good you know what i mean i don't know what do you guys think what does that look like what does that mean to you guys what? To, de- to declare his glory among the nations. Yeah, I, I think for me, it um, it's doing it with our lives. Yeah. Meaning, I, it, you know, I can um, I can declare the glory of my wife 
right? I can tell people how amazing she is and how wonderful she is. Well, I don't do that every moment of every day, but I also do it because it's a part of who I, who I am and mm-hmm. a part of my life, right? And so that manifests itself in a variety of ways. I proclaim her glory and my love for her by remaining pure, by um, honoring her, by respecting her. I think that same thing is true in our walk with God, that I, I proclaim his glory with my life by how I live my life based on what he's asked me to do, right? And, and then I also do it verbally. Right? Sometimes I, I tell people how amazing my wife is. Well, sometimes I should tell people how amazing the Lord is. Um, I don't know. Does that, does that make yep. sense, yep. Ben? Yeah, yeah, totally does. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, uh, what, the other part I saw was uh, verse 25, um, mm. where it kind of looks like it takes a turn. Uh, it says, For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised, right. semicolon. He is also to be feared above all gods. Like yeah. the word fear can sometimes be like people are like, I remember when I first, when I became a Christian, I started reading things like that. I'm like, what does it mean? Why would you want to be afraid? What does that mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, yeah, we were, we were chatting about this because yeah. it does. Yeah. yeah you're you reading, had you're a like, good perspective on this. Kurt. Is you're looking at it and it, it does. It's kind of like, Oh, well, all right. You know, kind of yeah. goes to that. But we were chatting about it that if, if we think about it, and this is the way that I function to just naturally is that I always, try to look at like a, the bigger picture of things, you know, when I'm going everywhere. And so even in this, like it says for, uh, declares glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples for the Lord is greatly is great and greatly to be praised. He's also to be feared above all gods that, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to we worship him. We, we thank him for what he's done. But in the end, we're, we're singing to an entity that literally created everything from nothing. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's pretty huge, you know. Mm-hmm. I I would be just a natural like woof, like a it ta- it kind of takes you back a little bit, mm-hmm. not to the fear of like oh my goodness I'm I can't even look I'm not even just gonna you know gonna be scared out of my mind but it's a reverent fear it's yeah. it's a it's a fear that's um he's his glory and his just his greatness it's a healthy fear to have because he's bigger than we are yeah mm-hmm. you know and just. When you walk outside, the only reason that we're breathing this air, you know, right now is because the Lord allowed it to be. And <laughs> he allowed mm-hmm. it to to come together that way. And so I think it's just that reminder of like, yeah, hey, he's he's to be feared above all gods. Because it says right after that though, yeah. for all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Mm-hmm. But the Lord created all. And so having that that healthy fear, knowing that he is sovereign and he is over all and he is the creator of everything is just that's a part of our worship in the end too, because we, we recognize it. Yeah. You know, when you look up into the stars mm-hmm. at night, when you look outside and just the trees, whatever it is, you know, like, man, yeah, I didn't make this. Yeah. yeah. Sure. A, a guy came over and planted that tree in my yard, but <laughs> like <laughs> that tree is, is, is from God. Like he, he created all these things. And that's just, mm-hmm. a, that's a huge thing for me. I know is always remembering who I'm worshiping yeah. and always having that in the back of my mind that he's greater and he's above all. Which is interesting is that whole idea of, of fear, I think, comes sometimes. The fear that we're talking about, not the not this, you know, being petrified of who he is, but the fear and the the, the um, standing in awe of who he is mm. comes, I think, as we realize who he is, mm-hmm. mm. which, which is the whole idea of worship. Yeah. We worship something because we find great value in it or because it's so much greater than we are. It's like, there's no way I could... My goodness, I, I just have to, I just have to worship this. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so, when we're declaring His wonders, out of that, automatically comes this this fear, and really fear from the the standpoint of awe. Like I'm standing in awe of who He is. It's like, oh my goodness, I, there's no way I could match Him. There's no way I could. All I have to do, or all I can do, in response to who He is, and the the recognition of who He is is to just worship him. Mm-hmm. It, it's just a, which is the, the whole standing in awe of him. Um, it's just, I think those two things follow. Mm-hmm. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I think, 
How do you th- like a lot of what we're talking about is um, with with I think it's reverence, right? What you guys are talking yeah. about because my That's my cool. interpretation when I heard when I would read the word fear back then it was like like I'm supposed to be afraid that he's gonna thump God's gonna thump me on the head because he's <laughs> mad at me, right? Yeah. That's mm-hmm. what I always equated the fear to being, <clears throat> but in reality it's it's that reverence. So um, so for us personally, I mean we talk about you know that individual understanding of that reverence. For you guys, as like you know, worship director at Olathe and worship pastor at, or not worship pastor, I'm sorry, campus pastor at Olathe, how what does that look like to you guys in a, in a corporate type setting? What what do you envision that sense of who God is and worshiping God in a corporate type setting? You know what I mean, because I, I think people will come sometimes and not necessarily have that reverence, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what do, what are you guys' thoughts? I think it's. That's always a tough one, mm-hmm. I think, too, because you you have you have everyone's coming from different walks of life. You don't mm-hmm. know who's out there, you know. But what we do know, as you know, when Brian's up there speaking, or if I'm leading worship, we we do know who we are worshiping. We do know, and so it's kind of putting that out there and reminding people. Like uh, I know at the beginning of a lot of services, we'll just preface me like, "Hey, don't forget why we're here. Like, mm-hmm. don't forget what we're yeah. doing. Don't forget these words that we're singing. Yeah, it's a catchy tune." Uh, sounds awesome, but in the end, don't don't let these words fall short of who we're singing to. And so it's just that trying to remind people, like, hey, we're worshiping the Lord together. This is this one time a week that we get to come together as a group and be able just to lift His praise up. Like, don't let that slip from this moment because it can be such a special time. Mm-hmm. Same, I'm, Brian, I'm sure you can speak on whenever you're um, giving what the Lord's given you through the Word, you know, speak on how you... What would I'm curious because I've never actually asked you that. Like, what do you? What's your thoughts in whenever you're giving that out to pull people back to? I, I think a lot of it comes back to. I think sometimes when we come into worship, no matter what role we have, when we come in, it doesn't always mean we're coming in ready to worship. Mm. <laughs> right? It oh, yeah. should. But we're coming in, but I, who knows what's happened on the way in. Who knows whether, you know, or who knows what happened during the week. And so I think some of it is creating that environment for everybody who's there. And like you said, Kurt, reminding us all, okay, we're here to worship him. And let's remember who he is. And then reminding people who he is in whatever context or whatever way. Yeah. And then as that happens, it's like, oh, yeah, let's worship him mm-hmm. because he is worthy. Um and the, the passage even goes on uh, to say that, uh, verse 20, 29, give, give, the Lord, give to the Lord the glory due His name. And I think it's, it's recognizing who He is and saying, He's worthy of all of my praise. He's worthy of all of my worship. And I think sometimes it's meeting all of us where we are, in a corporate setting, and then saying, wherever we've been, God wants to meet us mm-hmm. right now, and He wants our worship. Yeah. And so. That's good. And I love the uh, the other part of that that verse, um, verse 26, for all the gods of the peoples are idols. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I often wonder, <laughs> yeah. you know, I know He's yeah. talking, I know this passage is written during a time where there were probably legitimate, like, uh, actual specific gods that they were thinking of as this was being written, what would be our gods that we are trying to cut through in the, in the minds of, in the hearts and lives of our people Mm -hmm. or people that are attending a a campus at Grace? You know, I wonder what those would be. Well, and I love, I mean, completely agree. Like, yeah, yeah, they had these gods and nothing's changed. Yeah. Right. It just looks different. Yeah. Right. I mean, you've got sports or, yeah, all sorts of things that can mm-hmm. become idols and unknowingly too. I think that's mm-hmm. the danger of it. Is he, it's almost like a pitfall after a while. You're like, oh shoot, yeah, I'm in this hole, <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's got to get back out of it. And so I think that's what's mm-hmm. it just it's still relevant. Kind of going back onto this that they're worshiping the Lord. He's he's reading this out and nothing's changed though. Mm-hmm. Like, and Brian, what you said, I love that twenty nine. Give to the Lord the glory due His name. That's never ending. That's not like, hey, at this moment, it's like, if He's due all the glory, that means for the rest of our days, He's due that glory. 
And so that's that's not uh, kind of you said he it was almost a command at the beginning, where it says uh, uh, let's get back down to it. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Right, you said it's it's like a little bit of a command, and later on, give the glory, give to the Lord the glory due His name. That should be a never-ending thing, all the time, through other our lives, what we're doing, that people recognize and see, and then give glory to God because they see that we're following Him, even just outside. I mean, because I know that you, I know you love your wife, like you were saying. I've I heard you mention that several times, but I know you love her. I lost my thought. Completely. So, like, <laughs> I think you I, can end there. Yeah, I, yeah, know, yeah, you I, I know you love her. Yeah. <laughs> end that. Yeah. I know you love her. Brian looked at me in his eyes and I just like froze. I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> sure what you were going to say? Uh, yeah. But no, I've seen you do that. I've seen you talk about that. And so that's part of your life. It's part of, mm-hmm. you know. And so I love that we just will always give glory to God. Always. And I love, uh, you, you both mentioned verse 26. I love 26 too, because it's almost like he, he uses the majesty and the power of God to minimize all the other idols. Yeah. Right? right. I mean, so he says, uh, for all, all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Like he, he did something that no one else could do. And I think when we think about worship in our lives, either personally or corporately, one of, one of, the, one of the most significant things in my worship of him is when I realize what he d- d- did and what he does in my life that no one or nothing else could do. Mm. It's, it's the recognition of his power and the recognition of his movement in my life or the movement in our church or the movement in a campus or the movement in our world. He moves. And when all of the other idols that we put in place in our lives, and all of us have them, <laughs> right? We do. All of us have them. They look different. They look different, certainly, than biblical times when this was written. They look different than idols did 30, 40 years ago, potentially. Yeah. But we all have them. And sometimes we put more emphasis on that. And I think worship brings us back to the recognition that, you know what? God is really the only one who should be worshipped because he's really the one who's more powerful than anything else in this world. So I, just, I loved, I loved the, uh, it's, it's like the, that contrast mm-hmm. between all the other idols and then, then you have God. Where that keeps coming to mind for me is just like coming back to like ultimate reality, really. You know, it's like all week we uh, kind of get stuck in things and thought processes and it's like coming back to a community on Sundays to kind of come back to what is the reality. The reality is that he is bigger than everything. The reality is that he is in everything. He, the reality is he's in control of everything. And so as a community, I know for myself, it's like needing to come to a community every Sunday to come back to that realization sometimes, because you can get so stuck, even working at a church, you can get stuck in things that need to get done or, you know, you can kind of put your head down, but kind of lifting your eyes back up and realizing that he really is the, the God, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and cause I think in, in our culture too, it's can be sports. It can be, uh, you know, sometimes I think jobs can be our idols. Um, what people think of us can be our idols. I know like those two things can be idols in my life. And, but to come back to that place of, you know, he is the ultimate God and the thing to to realize is in ultimate control and just the reality of that. And when I know when I come to that place, it changes everything, right? And it's like, oh my gosh, this is, I've been looking at it differently or wrong almost and coming back to that clear thought and reality, um, which then makes you realize how awesome he is and the reverence of that. And like, oh, like I think when, even in our world, when somebody of importance walks in the room, there's a reverence there. It's, you know, mm-hmm. it's the, uh, mm-hmm. uh, like I would think if I was to meet a president or something, you'd have a certain way about you that you'd just be like, oh gosh, like this person's important, you know? And, you know, God is our savior. And I know we think of him as a friend a lot too, but there is that side of him where he's God, <laughs> which is pretty crazy. Um, and so I haven't thought about that in a long time. So that's awesome. Uh, just thinking about that through this scripture. Yeah. And he also, you know, in, in verse 29, it goes on. He says, give to the Lord the glory to his name. 
bring an offering and come before him. And then this last phrase, oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And that, that beauty of holiness is almost like a, it's like a, a splendor. And then the holiness indication there is from a position of, of purity, like that you're, you're right with God. Mm-hmm. You're walking holy with him. And so recognizing his splendor from a position of walking right with him. Mm. And when we do that, I, I, I just, I can just imagine that when our relationships with other people are right, we have more confidence in with them. We, there's a, uh, there's a lightness, there's a peace, there's a calm in those relationships. That same thing is true in our walk and our relationship with God. When we're, when we're, recognizing how recognizing his splendor and we're right with him it's like oh my goodness worship him in that mm. and that's what he's saying mm-hmm. oh my goodness this is this is amazing because it 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 does it does come with recognizing who he is I'm going to go on good. the record as saying that's real good <laughs> <laughs> we're good i do want to back up for a second so ben you said, and I've never put two and two together, but you said um, that you're like used to think it was he was going to thump you on the head. Is that why you kind of have that tick where you kind of like continually duck? Well, all every the time? time you move your left hand. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that brings so much clarity to this. Okay. I was always like, man, he just like ducks every time I move my left. Yeah. Luke, yeah. is that a, is that why you always put Ben to your left? Is that is that? Really, I just I noticed that that's what's going on here. No, it's like so, just, uh, don't make me. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Nice. And Ben keeps scooting. I, I'm not sure. He's <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He's getting nervous over away. there. Yeah, he's getting a little nervous. <laughs> getting scooty. Um, no, that's awesome. I love this. This is great. I like the way your guys' brains think because I don't think I'm sitting here quietly because I don't think I would look at it like first glance that way. And so I'm like just listening, taking it all in, and it's like, oh wow, this is yeah. really cool. So I'm trying to shut up. So. <laughs> <laughs> What would you guys say on verse 30 when it says, Tremble before him all the earth. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. What, this probably goes along with the fearing aspect, but tremble before him. What do you guys, like what would you, what does that mean to you guys? Tremble before him all the earth. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. So verse 30, tremble before him all the earth. I think it's that... That whole idea of reverence, mm-hmm. when we realize who he is, it does bring a, oh my goodness, it's the recognition of, mm-hmm. of who he is. And the world is firmly established. Mm-hmm. He's got it firmly in hand. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, it's, it's, not like, it's not like this willy-nilly thing that's going to, well, what's going to happen? Yeah. I mean, he's not sitting on his throne wringing his hands thinking, oh, mm-hmm. what just happened? Yeah. I mean, he's... He's got it. And his direction ultimately is it's not going to be moved. Mm-hmm. He's, right? and now, now, we have free will in the context of all of that, and we can all make choices and, and you know, all of that. It's a totally different topic. But I think in the end, we're to, to tremble before him. Mm-hmm. Not again. I, I, I agree with you, Ben. It's a reverence. Mm-hmm. It's, an, it's a standing in awe. And we can stand in awe and say, oh my goodness, I'm kind of just shrinking because of how magnificent yeah. he is. But I don't know, that, that's, yeah. that's just kind of how I, I process it. Yeah, that but, and right after. I mean, if it says, you know, tremble before him all the earth, the world is, also, is firmly established, it cannot be shaken. He goes to say in 31, let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Mm-hmm. And let them say among the nations, the Lord is king. So it's like, yeah, like tremble before him, have, have that fear for who he is. But rejoice in it though too, because he's king. Uh-huh. Like know know why we have that fear, but know that we have that security in him because he reigns. Which that's yeah. you can you can end it right there. <laughs> yeah. And the challenging thing for uh, for you guys at a campus <clears throat> is how do you uh, how do you capture this type of moment within fifty minutes uh, once a week <laughs> with your with your congregation, right? Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah, it really is. It, it, in fact, it's. I was just thinking that same thing. It's the challenge every week. Mm-hmm. 
that it because because you are finding trying to strike that balance mm-hmm. of showing him in the context of who he is mm-hmm. and making him really come alive in our lives, mm-hmm. but at the same time not trying to produce this this fear and and I, I think the the perspective that you mentioned earlier, Ben, that you had this perspective early on when you were younger that mm-hmm. God's like ready to He's ready to smack yeah. me down if I do something wrong. Mm-hmm. I don't. I think that's a much more common perspective yeah. than we maybe even realize. Mm-hmm. And I think it's um, and for whatever the reason, maybe our context growing up, maybe, yeah, probably. maybe mm-hmm. our experiences as yep. ki- as as adults, even sometimes, yeah. you know, we do things and then oh, I'm not going to do that again. Mm-hmm. I got my hand smacked or whatever. Yeah. But I I just don't think that's just not how yeah. God operates. But it speaks to the um, it speaks to people who are in positions of leadership or in in some type of authoritative position of influencing others. <clears throat> it should be a a thing of like helping people understand that like a healthy fear, you know, especially with kids. Right, you're talking about with growing up, like the fear that I understood that to mean when I became a Christian was taught by what I understood you know, uh, discipline to be right mm-hmm. in my life. So I always was like, Oh man, if I, if I make the wrong choice, I'm no longer, I'm going to be thumped. God's going to be mad at me and that kind of thing. And <clears throat> so I think also speaking to the holiness thing that, that it was talking about, one of the things I always, not always, but when I initially became a Christian, I understood holiness to mean, uh, sinless, Mm. which is not accurate, no, right? Not at all. What would you say that means, yeah. Brian? I, I think it means um, pursuing who God is uh-huh. and living right with Him in the moment, Yeah, which is different than perfection because it's not, and it's nor is it sinlessness. Uh-huh. It's that holiness is certainly, at the end of the day, it's becoming more like Him, mm-hmm. right, yeah. and mm-hmm. being holy. Mm-hmm. But I think that happens practically as I go through my day and I get un, unreasonably or unduly frustrated mm-hmm. about whatever the thing. Well, that's not holy, but I can pursue holiness and recognize his splendor by getting that right with God. Yeah. Okay, Lord, that was wrong. Mm-hmm. I, I, I shouldn't have responded that way. Yeah. And I think that's, that's recognizing who he is in the pursuit of holiness. And in holiness and walking with him moment by moment and yeah, day by day. That's good. So, and I think the other the other piece of it is, I think as leaders of whatever the organization, I think it's leaders of both in the context of church and in the context of the of the marketplace or the corporate world. Mm-hmm. I think there's a there's an opportunity for those who follow Jesus to exhibit this and show it. I, I uh, recently had a conversation with, with one of our staffers about this idea of not responding, not reacting when things don't go, don't go well, mm. but responding. And I think what we're talking about and our intent or our, our, sometimes our perspective that, oh, if I, if I do something wrong, then God's going to react and smack me yeah. or you know the the whole proverbial lightning bolt that's going to come. I I think that we can battle that as leaders by when things don't go well, we don't react. We respond from a position of Christ likeness and godliness, as opposed to and we all get frustrated. And I even told the, the staffer, I mean, I've had to grow in this, uh, particularly over the years. It's like, oh, I can't I can't react out of this. I need to respond, which is what God does. Mm-hmm. He responds to things, but he he usually it rarely reacts, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. he's he's he he. We know the expectations. We so I think yeah. that's just a a piece of that. Yeah, that's good. That's so true. Yeah, so true. Just that idea of the reaction reactionary stuff is not is not positive. <laughs> but you yeah. do have opportunities to instill and. In, show the light of who Jesus is through those situations. Yeah. Yep. There you Were go. you going to say something? Sorry, I no. didn't interrupt you. Okay. No, you're good. I no. was just agreeing. I agree. I agree. Um, but no, I think, uh, yeah, 
It's all just good. I'm just soaking it all in. I don't know. I just really like this. So <laughs> <laughs> I know I've said that already, um, but I think that's honestly. I think I think that's a good stopping point, just because I think there's a lot to uh, kind of think about yeah. and chew on. There's a lot. Um, before we do let um, let these guys go, one thing: yeah. if you guys could maybe give an update as to um, the campus at Olathe, can you maybe talk about? What's happening there with, I mean, we've got a building coming and those kinds of things. Maybe share what the status is and what's happening. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. Kurt, do you have anything from a, a worship perspective or a um, outreach perspective? I know first? for the, uh, actually, yeah, there's a couple things. So for, for the worship perspective of it, it's really cool because we get to kind of start turning the wheel slowly. Um, we've been... Uh, Function, functioning out of a real kind of a smaller little sound booth yeah. in the zone, kind of being real close to each other. So it's cool to actually get people on board to help with what's going to be when we're over there. Uh-huh. Um, so to help people kind of step up in some leadership roles, which is really exciting, building a team out of that. Uh, with outreach, um, this is actually really cool. Last night at students, there were there were two students who professed Christ. Oh, at dude, students that's awesome. Last night, one of them yeah. actually goes to Woodland Spring Middle, which okay. is... Um, right across from uh, where the building's going to be, oh, cool. literally across the road. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So it's just, I don't know, I think the Lord's pulling things together and we're seeing mm-hmm. things just um, just happen, and it's yeah. really cool. I did chuckle, though, with Brian this morning. I said, oh, yeah, they're moving dirt, <laughs> and it's raining. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's just moving mud. Yeah, rain, rain, yeah. rain, rain. <laughs> and we did, on the from the from the overall campus perspective, uh, the campus is going really well. I mean, the 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 spirit and the heart at the campus is really cool. In fact, one of the one of the staffers told me just this morning, I love the energy at the campus right now. Yeah. And uh, there just is. There's an excitement and energy. Oh, sure. And th- we're seeing people grow in multiple ways. Yeah. We're seeing more people step into ministry. We're seeing more people step into uh, to, you know serving week by week. More people stepping into um, uh, to all kinds of things, studies and groups and and all, all kinds of that. Uh, where the numerically the campus is growing, uh, so that's that's going really well um, to the point that we are running out of parking. <laughs> so, uh, that, which is a good problem. Yeah. It's still a problem. We have to address the service. Aren't you? Well, one of these days we're going to have to. Yeah, we're either going to have to add a add a service, or we're going to have to figure out some yeah. parking solutions. Right. Uh, and then last Wednesday. Um, a week ago, they actually started moving dirt, yeah. and Kurt was that's what Kurt was teasing me about because promptly, I guess it was Thursday they started moving dirt. Friday it rained, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and so uh, and they're uh, they're back at it right now. Yeah. And uh, so uh, currently, they're still projecting that we'll be um, moving in end of September of 2023. All right, so that's a, a, a good. This will be your last Christmas. At. Yeah. Uh, Lord willing. Yeah, you want yep. to sing it. I know, Luke. Last yep, there it is. I knew it was coming. I gave you my heart. <laughs> and the very next day, you dug it away. Dirt? Anybody? Anybody? Dirt? Dirt? <laughs> yeah. I see that. See what you did there, Luke. Uh, nice. I'll say just the So, cool, yeah, things are good. The yeah. coolest thing, I will, like, I've been here just over three years, and from the, the pandemic hitting and everything, we're at the park for a while. And the, the resiliency of the people who oh, have yeah. been there, though, and the yeah. growth that we have seen as a staff, because we see it through the years, right? Mm-hmm. And we see it sometimes from a perspective from this, from up on the stage, because you're looking at everybody mm-hmm. internally within our teams and whatnot. But it's just been so encouraging to see the growth of people towards Christ yeah. these past three years. And so I'm, I'm stoked for what the Lord's going to keep doing and building with it and just the relationships that have been made. The people who have found Christ and just the the growth um, spiritually that is awesome to see. Yeah, awesome. You guys are doing awesome stuff over there. Heck so yeah. thank you so much for taking time to meet with us and uh, to share this passage. It was fun to walk through it with you guys. Yeah, yeah. thanks, thanks guys. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that was good. I didn't know if I was doing that or you. No, I was. Okay, all right. I looked at you. You I knew. Know. You knew. I was like, oh. you follow your instincts. Okay. <laughs> no, that was really awesome. It's it's always awesome. I love Brian, and this is honest. I I, I love Brian because we are two very different people, and we look at things very differently. Mm-hmm. And I've always loved that about him. And so, like even scripture, it's like hearing how his brain works with scripture. It's like. 
I just would not pull that from that mm-hmm. passage. Um, but I've always learned so much from him yeah. because of that, and yeah. I always love that. I consider him one of the men that discipled me. Yeah, really? Oh yeah. Oh, I course. never knew yeah, that. I've, well, I've I've uh, you know served alongside him in ministry yeah. for years, and uh, he mentored me through several things in my life. So yeah. he's a, a ma- he's an awesome. Awesome human and a great, great follower of Christ. Yeah. So it was awesome. Um, and Kurt is great too, of course. Uh, so I appreciate both of them taking time out of their uh, schedules to meet with us. Mm-hmm. Um, we do have a few things to. A few announcements. Yeah, a few things. First of all, uh, the song that we released in September, mm-hmm. um, how is that doing? Great. <laughs> Yeah, like I mean, I just letting so. people know that it's there. All things new, right? Yeah, it's, all things new is out. Yeah. Rachel Caldwell sang yeah. on it. Um, actually, if we can, I always love to tell like yeah. a little bit of behind the scenes. Yeah, go for it. Um, so Rachel Caldwell sang on it, which was awesome. But probably the most fun and exciting thing about that song to me, outside of just the whole thing being mm-hmm. wonderful, and Cody Van Heusen putting his wonderful touches on it as well, um, was the violin part. That yes. starts the huge instrumental mm-hmm. was an add-on later. We mm-hmm. weren't going to do that originally, but we did the song at worship night, yeah. and Lenora, Back in our August. violinist from Olea, yeah. Olea, Olea, Olatha, ironically, because we just had the Olatha yeah. podcast, yep. uh, she played over it, yeah. and it sounded so good live, and luckily we were recording it. Uh, I asked Cody if we could put that on top and if it would sound okay. So we tried it and it made it phenomenal yeah, and just made that part yeah. uh, more than we could have ever dream. So that was really cool. So that's kind of the uh, behind the scenes fun yeah. stuff. Um, but yes, yeah. out everywhere. Yeah. And so uh, the other thing to let people know about is uh, what's coming up. Um, no, actually, it'll already be, already be released it'll by the time it's actually released. It'll already be released, ideally, yep. unless something happens. But yes, we have a uh, Christmas EP coming out. Yeah. So from last year's Christmas, we were like, those were so powerful and worshipful. Um, why not just put them out there forever mm-hmm. for people to listen to? So if you don't know already, they are out as well. Just search GC Collaborative, and it's Christmas Volume 2. Yeah. And if you can't find it, go to our link tree, linktree.com slash GC Collaborative, mm-hmm. and you'll be able to click on uh, the uh, your media player, and it should show up there. So yeah. So we're excited very about excited about that. Got yeah. some great renditions of classic mm-hmm. Christmas songs. And it was just a very worshipful yeah. time. I don't know. I love it. Our first... Uh, Christmas EP, if you will, was uh, very big yeah. and like folky orchestra mm-hmm. kind of feel. And this was just a piano, acoustic, yeah. and voices, beautiful. and it was beautiful. I love it. So, um, so, yeah, we're super excited about that. And then we also have Christmas coming up yeah. in a few weeks. We so do. all of you guys who are volunteering and helping in different yeah. ways with that, thank you so much. Uh, Christmas is always just a blast, um, mm-hmm. and so we're just excited for the services. Uh, we're doing some rock and roll. Uh, first song is just straight guitars and fun, and yeah. you know, see what happens. And yeah. I'm excited. It's always fun. I think we always try to just send out a foundation, if you will, musically, mm-hmm. and then it's fun to see how each campus takes that and makes it their own, yeah. and uh, for their own specific campus and environment and stuff yeah. like that. It's always a blast. Yeah. So, yeah, we do appreciate all you volunteers across all of our campuses mm-hmm. um, being a part of your local church body, making Christmas happen. So, yeah. Uh, what else, man? Is there anything else? I think, I think that's it. I mean, I always do the planning center, but I feel like since it's, this is going to be the last podcast of uh-huh. 2022, I okay. think you should do a planning what? center kind of, you know, let's see how you do it. Oof. I want to learn from the master. Um, okay. Don't forget to click. I don't know, man. I, I don't even remember what you say now. Hit, well, you're not doing what I do. do. You're doing what you. What, what would Ben say? Oh. Well, what would I say? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> if <laughs> uh, don't forget. Yep. Let us know you're going to be there. Love yeah. you guys. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> See ya. Bye, guys. That was amazing. Uh, thanks for listening to the GC Collaborative Podcast. If you have any questions or would like more information, check us out at visitgracechurch.com.